everybody, what's up, and welcome into the Good Buddies Anime Review. I am your good buddy, Roger. And I uh, am your good buddy, Brandon. And Brandon, what are we talking about this week? Well, this week, we're doing the thing we always do three, uh, three or four weeks into the new anime season. We're going to be telling our good buddies what we think they should be checking out. We, uh, we like to give it, you know, rule of three. We yeah. like to do the rule of three. Give it three episodes to decide whether or not you like it or not. And we're going to tell you all about a few shows that we think y'all should check out. Yeah, from the winter 2020 anime season. Yes, indeed. Uh, we're not going to have a ramble this week. We nope. usually, when we do these, we like to have the ramble be like our honorable mentions, dishonorable mentions things that maybe you don't but um so we're actually going to do two weeks of this one i think yep. each of us have brought two shows this week we're each going to bring two shows next week and then uh we'll have the ramble where we talk about everything else that is correct yeah man feels good so no ratings or anything um you know it's only three episodes in we we can we can say like a tentative whatever but let's go ahead and get on into mm-hmm. it uh i'm gonna start us off with i like you know i like to bring my a game for my first one okay so i'm gonna tell you about what is easily currently my number one pick this season dang favorite right out of the gate favorite right out of the gate i come strong i come fast i come okay. hard i come okay. strong okay okay i just said i come fast <laughs> yeah very yeah very but I, it's I very def- very thick very opaque jesus christ too much uh <laughs> let me hit y'all with keep your hands off azoken i think it's azoken i think they said it in episode three and it, they said azoken so that's what i'm going with uh easily my number one this season winter 2020 Keep Your Hands Off Aizoken is, first and foremost, a love letter to animators and their craft. It is uh, a really just beautifully made and beautifully paced story. Uh, Focuses on three high school girls and their drive to create their own anime. Uh, Features some of the most creative animation I've seen in a while. I freaking love it. It's very cool. It is very cool. Yeah. And it's rad. Starts off with uh, a a girl named Midori Asakusa. Asakusa? Uh, who is at a very young age? She liked she liked to draw. She liked to sketch things, um, but like that was kind of the extent of it. And then one night, you see at the beginning of the show, she's laying at home and watching a uh, future boy Conan, I believe it is, uh, which is a real thing. I didn't know it was a real thing at the time. I looked it up. I was like, rad. Yeah, obviously not up on my anime history. Sorry, guys. Um, it was an old uh, Miyazaki anime and she falls in love with it. She is immediately inspired. She wants to do she and that's when she says in the show she realized the things she loved the animation the cartoons that she loves someone made that which is a thing that like i think uh, uh, many of like anyone who's created something or wants to be a creative i think that's a moment that like a lot of us have had or like roger you're a musician you you know definitely at some point we're just like wait people make this i can make this yeah and it's like a very it's a really cool moment and you get to see it happen similar to what we do here at the good buddies yeah man people people had podcasts we we both like podcasts yeah man we we were able to do a podcast we started making podcasts yeah oh it's pretty good (laughs) we're doing okay it's pretty good (laughs) buddies you know pretty good buddies nice <laughs> but yeah that's how it starts with uh with uh, As- uh asakusa who we then uh, have a little time jump she's in high school she has a friend named sayaka kanamori who is perfect and has never done anything wrong uh who just really more than anything she wants to make money and there's a thing you'll hear people compare this show to uh it gets the occasional comparison to ed ed and eddie i think that is not entirely accurate but apt pretty close because you've got this character who all she wants to do is make money and get hers and then you've got uh this girl who is kind of a giant goofball but wants to make cartoons and they meet up with another girl who is not double d she's not a genius or anything but she is very fun uh she's very popular she's actually a amateur model uh wait i have the names subami mizusaki uh amateur model in high school same you know same school as them and they all meet up and decide hey we want to make a anime and that's basically the show where it really shines is like they have these moments where they're sketching out this stuff and you're seeing like these concept and and these different like sketches it's all a different style to how they are made obviously uh the show by the way from the director of devil man cry baby that guy does a lot of good work the shows rad um but like they'll suddenly they'll be in their sketches and you're watching them interact with this again differently drawn and animated stuff and it all just works so well and it flows together and it's freaking cool and it's 
it's just rad. I really like it. It's easily my favorite so far this year, uh, or this season, for sure. This year, obviously. We just started the year. Yeah. But uh, super rad, super cool. I'm super into it. Check out Keep Your Hands Off Azoken. Uh, also has a ripping, rocking opening theme, which is available on Spotify as Easy Breezy um, by Chelmiko, I believe. Uh, check it. It's rad. But yeah, I love it. Uh, it is on yeah, Crunchyroll. Yeah, it's on Crunchyroll. You can also find it on Verve, obviously. I was actually just talking to a friend at work about it. Um, she was like, oh, I heard that show's good. I was like, check it out. You got Verve? Yeah, I got Verve. Check it out. But yeah, um, super cool show. My number one so yeah, far. I'm pretty sure it'll get a review from us in the future. Probably so. I, I, I'm really enjoying it, though. Um, but yeah, that's my number one so far. Roger, Okay. what do you got for us? Let me let me give you... I, mine are in no particular order, but... No particular order. This one, you might say, the, the last one where it, like... Uh, really holds high the people that create the animation and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. These people uh, that did this show might be praised by those people. Sure. I'm talking about Somali and the Forest Spirit. Beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. And, yes. you know, uh, I know there's like at least one character design you don't meld with very well, but overall, I mean, the show is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So before I get into it, I'll just kind of tell you what it looks like. There are these very, like... They'll do like bushes. It's it's a lot of forest settings and stuff like that, and they're going into different towns and stuff. So it, it's kind of old world. Mm. Uh, but you'll see like bushes or rocks off to the, th- the side, and they're just like little blobs. Yeah, that this this was a thing that like you mentioned, and I I was like huh, it didn't really hit me. And then I watched uh, is it episode two or three where they meet the the Oni people. I think it's two. I think it's two. Um, there's a bit there where, like, one of them is like hanging up clothes on a on a on a, like a line to dry out, mm-hmm. and like that was the first. Like, I just noticed. Oh, like the backgrounds and everything are so. They're like they're so. It's like a. Looking. It's like that form of abstract art. Yeah. That, that makes something. Yeah, and it's you still, really yeah. Rad. It, your eye pulls it together. It makes the image for you. Mm-hmm. But what it is is just a bunch of colored circles and stuff like that yeah, together. Dude. It's really, really interesting work. Mm. And I also think that the character designs are pretty cool. But the story itself is uh, is a story of a travel mm-hmm. and a story of... The journey. Yeah, a journey and somewhat of, you know, parenthood mm-hmm. um, or, or a kinship of where you're trying to keep something safe. Sure. Uh, you're, you're trying to do the right thing. And it follows a golem who is a forest spirit. Uh-huh. Uh, he, he is the guardian of the forest and all things living there. Mm-hmm. Um, and one day he finds this tiny baby human girl. Mm-hmm. Now, there are a bunch of weird creatures. I, I, I would often compare it, like whenever I talk to a couple of people about it, I compared it to uh, the Ancient Magician's Bride, mm. where it's very uh, super fantasy driven. You got like dragons and all sorts of cool creatures. This is just like that, except a lot more of the, there. There's a lot of sentient. They are sentient in that show as well, but you have like full on cities of these people. There are almost no humans to be seen. Yes, that's kind of what makes Somali the the girl that the golem finds. Mm. Uh, makes her unique because there there are almost none and very quickly early on in the first episode you realize oh they a lot of them uh may consider somali a dish Mm -hmm. or turns um, out humans are delicious yeah it turns out they're (laughs) delicious and it also turns out and this is very real world they're hard to live with well they don't meld with other creatures well yeah um, and these creatures in this world were smart enough to take that and they warded the humans off to, I don't know where, yeah, I haven't it, got that far yet. It like started, It. I think what they say is it started as like, you know, they were like, oh, hey, people. And at first everything was like, kind of chill. It was like, oh, this is different. We're all sentient. Cool. And then like humans were like, oh, why do they look like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the it's like it's the like story. Such a shallow reason to go to war, but apparently they did. Yeah, and now they're just the gone. the idea behind it is very similar to the story Grendel. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah where bit. where uh, it's Freaking the Grindel. side story of Beowulf, but Grendel itself is told as a story where this is a creature that was not Shun. evil or anything at all. It just wanted to talk to people it wanted to have a uh, friendship or something now, i thought grendel wanted them to turn down the damn music no that was like a thing it was like he would attack the the meat hall because they were all loud and shit and he was like hey shut the fuck up and he went crazy i don't i don't recall that that's what i remember um 
the well, we'll essentially the story the story <laughs> and something happens or whatever and people turn they they don't understand Grindel is very misunderstood right right for sure whereas uh, humans in their own way are very misunderstood but and misunderstanding um, yeah and it led to their extinction and now the golem is trying to find her and get her to other humans yeah because he feels this duty to do so Mm -hmm. however he does say that he doesn't understand feelings or any of that yeah it's as much like this golem protecting and trying to help Somali learn how to you know not maybe you don't go running and get lost in the city because Mm -hmm. you might get eaten in so much as it's also Somali being like Hey, you know, feelings exist, and he's like, I don't get it, and he's like, Well, maybe you do. I don't get it. Yeah, it's, so it's definitely it's a little bit. It's a little bit of them like teaching it, each other yeah. a little, but it's yeah, mostly it's definitely. Yeah. It's definitely. You know, he, she she is learning from him and being protected by him. Yes. but you know, like with uh, children and stuff like that, you you do learn from them too. Yeah. Um, it's also very cute. <laughs> it is It is extremely adorable. Somali is so cute. Protect baby. Yeah, he must protect. And I have I have good faith that Golem will. And the end of the first episode reveals another thing, but I won't spoil that for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But the show is definitely going to try to make somebody cry. Sure. And it could be me. It could be me. It, it probably will be. <laughs> yeah, it could be me. <laughs> oh, baby. Uh, but I think that it's a really good show. I think that it's really pretty to look at. Mm. Um, it's well written. The, the world is super cool. All the different characters and creatures that people have made, the different races, they're really fun and unique takes on them. So, sure. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. I, I think it's it's definitely one of my top runners for the season. Also, another one that you'll probably catch a review from your good buddies in the future. Yeah, man, I'm into it. Uh, what you got next, dude? What's your final one? Uh, let me tell you about one more. My last one for this final week. Final for this week. Uh, you know what? I'm going to hit you with this one. I was I had one ready to go, but I think I want to talk about this one instead. Um, there is a show that I've mentioned previously on Rambles and stuff that I have seen no one talking about it, and I don't really understand why. Uh, maybe maybe our good buddies can, can shed some light on that for me, but this is one that I think is... I don't think it's going to be best of the year. Um... But it's very fun, and I'm having a good time with it. Uh, it's called Show by Rock Mashu Midesh, I think is how that's pronounced. It's, you know, words. Um, so the whole thing with this one is it's it's all based on this, uh, like, uh, phone app rhythm game uh, that apparently, like, th- there was an anime of it previously. This doesn't really have anything to do with that. Um, the whole thing is just, like... You know, it was an anime to get people to buy this game and do some microtransactions. Cool. Um, This show in particular, it starts with this. So it's like these anthropomorphic characters, these like animal girls. uh, And it starts with a small town girl living in a lonely world. No, she's a country town fox girl uh, who makes her way to the big city to pursue a musical career. She's basically like gotten an invite to audition for this, you know, label or something. And she, you know, jumps on the train, gets out there. Uh, things go a little bit sideways, but she does meet up with three more animal girls who are in this uh, fledgling bl- band, and that's where things really get started. Um, it's really cute. It's got some decent music. Um, all of the non-main characters, I guess is how I would put it, uh, instead of being like animal people, are these little agretzko looking chibi-style animals and... They are so cute. Like, it probably would be best of the year if the show was just about those characters, yeah. honestly, because it's so freaking cute. But, like, it's really nice. It's got some decent music. It does... There's a couple parts in episode one and in episode three where there's, like, a proper performance, and it goes into this, like, CG animation, which in episode one, I was kind of like, okay, whatever. Like fine in episode three when they did it i was like whoa this is actually kind of decent like i usually hate cg the only time i've really liked it was um uh land of the lustrous that's the one that really did it for me and a little bit in um uh high school girl high school girl was okay but like this one they they go into these performances where they're like on stage rocking out going nuts uh there's another band that's introduced at the end of episode two and the and like part way through episode three and you see them performing and i'm like okay normally when i see cg in these shows when it goes from like one to the other it's like real like stiff like like think i liked um uh what was the uh, zombie zombie land saga Mm -hmm. i like zombie land saga 
the bits where they go into the CG, it's like really stiff and kind of bummed me out. And I was like, this doesn't look great. Uh, there's another show this year that does that. We'll talk about it next week. But when they go into the CG with this one, it's so damn smooth. I actually like it. It's that land of the lustrous smooth. It's it's not it's like not that level because it's way more cartoony and stuff. Okay. But like it's not all herky jerky, and it like I actually like it. It okay. looks it looks more like what I would expect in like a decently high budget video game rather than like you know it's not it's not freaking Pixar level, but it's decent. It's like yeah. not bad, and it actually works. And I do like the characters. Um, it's it's wild, man. I just I'm really into it. Um, the, what was the moment I showed you? There's a moment in the episode where, again, this is going back yeah, to like where the, the grandpa little, wasn't dead. Yeah, there's like a whole thing where like uh, the girl is getting ready to get on the train and stuff, and she's talking to her mom and her grandma, who literally just look like Retsko, like but like drawn in anime style instead of like the Flash style. And grandma, like it's this, it's hilarious. She's like, I'm sure your grandpa's looking down on you as well. And they look like, and she's like, Yeah, thanks, grandpa. And they look at this picture, and it's like this little fox girl and then like here's this old man fox with a cane and stuff it's like super like touching and then the door slides open it's just him and he's like i'm not dead (laughs) it's freaking hilarious the show's very funny and i think i love it so maybe check it out again i'm not sure why literally i haven't seen anyone talking about it but maybe check it out it's called show by rock Mashu Myresh, which apparently is like the third season of this show, which like again doesn't have anything to do with the previous seasons, or so I've been led to believe. Um, but it's kind of rad. It's on Funimation. You can stream it. Music's okay. It's decent. Mm, cool. It's a fun time. It's a good show. I like it. I it's like it. It's a good show. Anyway, what you got for me, Roger? For your show, right, man. One? For my final one this week, and and you might give me a, give me a hand with this one. All right. Um, because it's uh, gonna be. I have two kind of like more, uh, I don't know what the word is, but they're more like uh, <laughs> the words. Yeah. The words that are Who knows out. the word, but Not I don't care about the word. I'm psychological talking. horror. Yeah. I wouldn't say horror, but psychological. But definitely psychological. Sure. Definitely messing with your head. Yeah. Uh, anyway. This one's called Inspector. Inspector. I, I have another one that I will talk about next week. Now spell it. I in slash. Yeah. Slash S P. E C T R E Inspector Inspector Like like the like a ghost Spectre. Like a Spectre Yeah like a Like I'm in the Spectre Like a Spectre Like like that James Bond movie Spectre Yeah like a ghost <laughs> A Spectre Uh it, it's a it's a really really cool An apparition you say An apparition <laughs> A poltergeist oh. The, the fiendish ghoul. Oh, my God. Right. A freaking dimmick. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. We've had fun. Yeah. Uh, so this sto- this follows the uh, story starting out of uh, Kotoko, who is kidnapped by a bunch of yokai. Yes. Let me say right now, I feel like if you haven't already seen this one, please go watch the first episode, this one at least, because I've, it really keeps you guessing mm-hmm. for that first episode. Like, you don't know what's happening or where it's going. So maybe check it out. Minor mm-hmm. spoilers for the first episode. Yeah. Okay. I think this is, like, right out the yeah. gate what happens. She's kidnapped by these yokai, and they want her to be uh, their goddess of wisdom. Yes. Um, and what what that entails, you start finding out throughout the show after this moment. Mm-hmm. But she has to give up a leg and an eye. Uh, did she have to give up anything else? I think it was just a leg and eye. A leg and an eye. It was a left leg, right eye. Yep. So and once she gives that up, she is their goddess of wisdom, and she can see these creatures and speak to them. Yeah, they kind of um, they kind of tell you it's like a it's like a thing because like I so this one I don't know of. There's like apparently a Japanese folklore thing that like a super wise god or creature like that had one leg or something. Uh-huh. And of course, like having one eye is kind of a thing. Odin is a is a god of wisdom. Yeah, the all seeing eye. eye. He traded his eye for wisdom or something yep. like that. But yeah, that that's a thing. Okay, uh, so. Flash forward into the future, she runs into Kuro. Uh, Kuro. I'm just yes. gonna call him by his first name. Kuro. Sure. Um, a man who's uh, who she previously saved his life. Quote unquote. Yeah, she <laughs> saved his life uh, years ago, and uh, she fell in love with him, even though he she, had a girlfriend. She had she had a little love at first sight. Yeah, and then you're telling me she got the doki dokies. Yeah, and then she. <laughs> 
<laughs> then she low key stalked him for the next few years. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this because this is a thing that I was a little mm, about. Uh, you you said it didn't bother you at all. Fine. When they met, she was 15 and he was second. He was in his second year of college, I think, mm-hmm. which means he would have been at least 20. Yeah, and she so, was she was younger. Yes, when she fell in love with him, but yes. he it was had, like it was there like were no a, feelings there. It's just from him. A, a little crush uh, mm-hmm. that like I faint every time we touch. Yeah, but yeah. now when they meet again, what we're talking about in the first episode is two years later. So she, she is 17, he's 22. That is an age gap that I'm kind of like, eh, didn't really bother you as much. Fair. If it bothers you, nah, nah, nah. I will just minor spoilers for later. There is a time jump, mm-hmm. another two years, which I think, <clears throat> think puts us firmly on the other side of skeevy. Cause she's yeah. like, you know, 19 now and it's okay. Better. Um, so I'm, I'm fine with the show. I just, I want to throw that out there yeah. in, case, in case an age gap in a relationship bothers you. Maybe it won't so much. Yeah, these is it didn't bother me because these are nitpicks. Maybe yeah, but yeah it's, I mean it's, it's for me they're, personally. They're young adults. For me personally, the, it's like if you're under eighteen, problem. Yeah, like, well, period. I mean, I was a child until I was thirty. So Jesus and, Christ, <laughs> I'm still a grown ass kid. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still trying to figure out how to be an adult. Um, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> but. She, you know, is low-key stalking him, and eventually, uh, his girlfriend stops showing up with him, and through through gossip, uh, maybe they broke up. And she's just like, I'm gonna make my move. <laughs> yep, so she makes her move, and she goes, and of course, he doesn't remember her right at first. She's like, I saved your life. He's like, what the, what are you talking about, And then you get to see the moment of her saving his life. Yes. Which is, it's pretty ridiculous. This is not making the show sound appealing at all. The I show like rocks. The show is amazing. The show is fucking amazing. Yeah, it's great so far. Um, and <laughs> as they talk or whatever, she keeps making advances towards him, trying to get him to date her. And she lures him into uh, a task she has to do, yes. which involves uh, a yokai that has uh, gone kind of, kind of crazy. off the rails. Kind it, of is, rogue. it is now a specter. Yes. So this basically, you've got this weird like monster that is terrorizing a library or something. Yeah. And she's got to like try to put a stop to that. Yep. And for one reason or another, he's able to see these yokai too. Hmm. Um. He's had some sort of interaction in the past, and then a this weird goofy love story. Yeah. Of this girl who didn't really save this guy's life. Yeah stalked him and is is confessing her love to him repeatedly uh drags into this thing and then a freaking fight happens yeah and it is a fairly violent fight yes it it goes from being like kind of will they won't they like kind of a dramatic love story kind of thing to at times just straight up hilarious yeah, like with with some of the some of the experiences she has with these other spirits and stuff. To oh god, yeah, so, there's blood. So yeah, you got like a little rom uh, a little rom com going, and then all of a sudden, that's when the you know like the psychological stuff will hit. Things, things pop off, and there there are fights, and then there's episodes after where there's no fight. It's You're just seeing a lot of her talking, do her job there. as the goddess of, uh, of yes. wisdom for these yokai. So yeah, and it is very interesting. I will say like so that first episode had like a lot of different things going on, as we said, like a little bit of love story, a little bit of comedy, a little bit of action. Second episode, there's just there's a little bit of comedy and a lot of talking. Yeah, it's never boring. Yeah, it's a total shift, but it is not boring at all. Yeah, it always works. The focus is. As far as I can tell, her job as the goddess mm. of wisdom and to then, the Jokai. And then, third episode gets uh, even a little bit different. So, I don't know really where this show's going. I'm yeah. all along for the ride, for sure. Yeah, I know this is... Uh, I, like, I feel like I did a really poor job of explaining it, but... <laughs> Damn, it's hard to explain this one. Yeah, it's it's pretty weird, but it's really fun. It's yeah. also like like super funny at times. Yeah, um, there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on. I'm super into it. This this is a recommendation from your buddies. Check the check out Inspector, mm-hmm. uh, Crunchyroll slash Verve. Uh, yeah, pretty rad. And I love how like front uh, Kotoko is with everything. Yeah, that that is one she's thing. She's very dry. Yeah, she's super rad. Uh, the dude is like so the interactions they have for the most part anyway he's like hey this is dumb leave me alone and like which again this is mostly like going back to my little age gap thing uh so she's like 
hey, uh, let's date or whatever. And he's like, I don't date middle schoolers. Hey, I'm in high school. I'm 17. No. He's just, like, not into it. And it's, like, he's super, like, just meh, deadpan. And mm-hmm. it works so well against her, like, she is dry but also sometimes goofy because she is younger than him. Like, it just works. Like, the, the chemistry with them is, like, real. It's happening. Yeah. It's very cool. The it's way very cool. the way they they wrote it and put it all together. Yeah, dude. It's it's very interesting. Uh, and and it's uh it's pleasing to look at. A lot of cool another one with a lot of cool designs. Yeah, man. Whole bunch of different little yokai and every time you see one you're like, "What's that one's deal? What's that doing?" Yeah. <laughs> that one looked like toilet paper. <laughs> what are these little it's like a little puppy? Um, what is it got Pokemon? Yeah, some of them look like a dead samurai, but it's a very friendly ghost, you know. Yeah. <laughs> dead it's, samurai, the friendly it's, ghost freaking ridiculous i love it and i highly recommend that anybody check it out yeah so far three episodes in like again i'm not 100 percent sure where it's going but i'm in i'm freaking yeah. in it's rad it's a lot of fun yep i'm liking it but that's all we got for this week yeah we'll have a few more next week uh two more shows uh each to talk about so four uh four total yep then four total now uh and then we'll get into our ramble and have our honorable dishonorable mentions we got a few that we have already talked about that I know, are man. I that was... are languishing in the pit of shame i didn't get to watch very much anime this week you, you spent got, three episodes, one episodes on one and i spent three episodes on one show that i really wish i had not have done <laughs> people people are like upset about that show and for reasons other than i am which is oh. pretty interesting we'll talk about it in okay. the ramble next week uh, but yeah, we uh, we're gonna get that's a little that's a little teaser for y'all, a little teaser for y'all. Is it, it or are there reasons different than why I didn't like it? Maybe I don't know. We'll talk about it. Okay. But yeah, man, that's about it for this week. Uh, we want to thank y'all for listening. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate your time. If you're on the YouTube, please leave us a like, comment, and subscribe. Click that bell so we can ding your dong again next week. We're gonna be going over four more shows we think you should be watching this mm-hmm. season. And I think that about wraps it up. We do want to give yeah. a shout out to our good buddy Haas for our closing theme on the YouTube. Yes. That is The Buddy's Good. You can find Haas at Thomas Tastes Better on Instagram. Again, that's Haas, Thomas Tastes Better. All one word, Thomas Tastes Better on Instagram. And is that about to do it for the YouTube? And then we'll go into like little plugs. Yeah, that about does it for the YouTube. Uh, the Tuesday where the, the ramble would be, I'm going to put another episode of Summer Sweetheart up. So if any of the good buddies have been checking that out, which I know some have, I've seen some comments on there. Lord have I, mercy. I appreciate it. We'll have another extra episode of that. Nice, this dude. This coming week. So, so yep. uh, we'll talk to y'all later. We'll do a little plugs for the uh, podcast after this. And love you. Love you.